right. <clears throat> hey class, welcome back to Mr. Martyr and Mr. Walter's Flip Classroom. This is part five, India. As we are teaching tonight, you guys want to copy down your notes on the Cornell note packet under video five, imperialism in India. As always, if we're going too fast, please feel free to pause the tape and or pause the video and uh, copy down your notes. All right, so uh, a little bit of background information on India. It was originally ruled by the Mughal Empire and they reigned for a very long time, as you can see, from the 1500s to the 1800s. And at their peak, they were just as large and just as powerful as any European nation. And so the question that we ask ourselves is what happened that allowed them uh, to be taken over by the Europeans? And it, uh, it's also worth mentioning during this that it was during this time period that they built one of the greatest uh, world monuments, the Taj Mahal. It's a very beautiful building. If you're ever in India, you can go see it. And if you don't want to do that, there's one in Atlantic City. Okay. So what happens? Well, there's this company called the East India Trading Company, and they are a British company. Uh, and essentially, they are merchants from European countries, and they compete for, uh, for the highly profitable trade within India. And in the early 1600s, the British East India Company starts to gain specific trading rights with this empire, which means that no one else is allowed to trade with them. And if you remember, that always helps out the European nations, not the locals. And the Mughal, as Mughal power declines, the power and influence of the East India Trading Company increases. And I want you to understand that this is not a government entity. This is a um, economic corporation that is slowly taking over control. All right, guys, and just like Mr. Walter said, Europeans are taking control. One thing I hope the pattern you guys see is that everything the Europeans touch, they slowly begin to ruin the population of all these native countries declines. So, once the British arrive, they encourage industry and disunity among the rival Indian princes. So it's kind of like the old uh, rival game of divide and conquer. The British defeat other European nations. So Europe, or so England is the only European country in India at the time. The, uh, the, East, the East India Company officials lack respect and customs of the Indians. They introduce a policy, policies that affect both caste system and marriages. And that's tremendously important, if you remember from the beginning of the year, when we talked about the Eastern religions. And they introduce changes affecting the sepoys. And, Mr. Walter, what's the sepoy? Again, I'm so glad you asked this, Mr. Martin, because that's the very next slide. A sepo, a sepoy, is an Indian soldier who is employed in fighting for the British. And here is the story of kind of what happens, because what we're going to see is that these soldiers have a rebellion. And so I'm going to read this story to you. Uh, no one knows how the rumor started, but it spread quickly. The bullets for the new rifles, the story went, were greased with the fat of cows and pigs. The sepoys were outraged, because Hindus regarded the cow as sacred, and Muslims could not touch pork using these bullets. It would violate the beliefs of both groups. As a result, the Sipo started the rebellion in May of 1857. And the most important point is that it doesn't matter if the story is true or not, but the, or it doesn't matter if the rumor was true or not, but this had a big effect on the Indians. They were very upset that their culture was being disrespected, and so they rebelled. All right, so what do the Brits do? Well, quite honestly, guys, they don't care. They're concerned with one thing, money and power. That's two things, really. But they start pushing the Indians to be Christians. Uh, prior to this whole Indian, uh, prior to this whole incident, they told the Indians, "You should be Christian anyway." So, you know, this really shouldn't matter to you. And clearly, that doesn't that doesn't uh, that's not a respect for their culture. All right, the sepoys rebel and kill British colonists. They do not exclude women or children. So basically, they kill anybody that's British, and the British retaliate themselves by killing thousands of Indians. Because the British, again, being an, a geographic winner, have lots of natural resources, they have better weapons than the sepoys. And so what will happen is, after they win, the British officially take over uh, the country of India. 
All right, the end result is Great Britain forces India to follow policies that benefit the parent country and that are devastating to the Indians. So, for instance, they tell the Indians to start growing this. And if you're looking at this, this is a picture of cotton. But one thing you can't do with cotton is eat it. And so what happens is their Indian farms start growing lots of uh, cash crops like cotton and things of that nature, and they are shipping them to the British. And what will happen is they're not growing uh, things like wheat, and, and what will happen is that there, there is a major famine and food shortage, mass starvation, and a lot of people die because of this policy. And again, the British aren't affected. All right, the Indians begin to organize movements for a self-rule, and in 1885, the Indian National Congress is formed. And this led to a long struggle to compete for independence. Now, there's two religious groups in India at the time, Hindus and Muslims. At the time, they're working together, all right, in order to defeat the British. The Hindus and the Muslims, which again, have very uh, uh, tremendous differences, they work together. By 1906, however, the Muslims cannot work with the Indians, and they form their own political party. Finally, after World War II, in 1947, uh, the Indians gain their own independence, and India becomes a Hindu country with its neighboring country, Pakistan, being a Muslim country. The end result being, ladies and gentlemen, is that both of these countries do not get along, they have strong differences, and to this day, both countries are nuclear powers. Yeah, so this is a map, what you're looking at here is what the British do to India. They divide it up and they create regions that are going to be specifically Muslim and regions that are going to be specifically Hindu. And when they do this, uh, both sides are going to resent the other side because they feel as though they should have gotten more land out of the deal. Specifically this region up here called Kashmir. And they fight over this region to this day. This is just another picture of that. And so this is where we have Pakistan and India, which at one point was the same country. Mm -hmm. Again, the British are the ones that divide this up, and they divide it based on uh, religious differences. Hey, Mr. Walter, quick question for you. We see India here. We see Pakistan here. What country's on the other side of Pakistan? Oh, that's a good question, Mr. Martyron. Well. Maybe, maybe for a bonus point, you might have to come in tomorrow and tell us. Well, I'll tell you what. That's a big one. All right, the end result impact. Um, the positive things that are going to happen, the British will improve transportation and infrastructure, they're going to build roads and railroads, and they're going to introduce new medicines. Uh, their population will start to increase rapidly, and to this day, India has one of the largest populations in the world. They will also introduce new agricultural methods, uh, but they will pressure farmers to grow cash crops and not food crops, and that will be devastating to the Indians. Alrighty guys, again, if we went a little bit too fast, you can always go back, replay the video again, or go back and pause any slide that you felt we went a little bit too quickly over. Uh, I'm all, we're also going to put this uh, discussion question up, and we want you to come in tomorrow prepared to talk about this. And essentially the question is this, how does Indian imperialism compare to Europeans' approach to Africa? What is similar and what is different? Be prepared to come in tomorrow with an answer to this question. Alrighty guys, great job tonight. <laughs>